The Roman Forum was the religious, economic, and political center of ancient Rome. The valley that hosts the Roman Forum is protected by the Seven Hills of Rome and was used since the 13th century BC by local tribes as a burial place. However, the valley was actually a marshy area. Since it had already become one of the main centers of Rome's life, the area needed to be reclaimed. The Romans dried the valley and in the 7th century BC, they built an underground waterway to serve as a sewer, which is still in use today. The Forum was in use for approximately 1400 years, from around 800 BC to 600 AD. Rome became a republic in 509 BC. Since then, the Forum was the center of life in ancient Rome. Here, triumphal processions took place, elections were held, and the Senate assembled. The Forum was filled with temples, basilicas, and triumphal arches, but most of the ancient buildings and sites in the Roman Forum were destroyed in 410 AD, around the time that the entire Roman Empire began to fall. This is one of my favorite places to visit in Rome, because I remember reading about it in elementary school. However, it's one thing to read about history, it's another thing to walk where history took place. Construction of the last of the large basilicas was started by Emperor Maxentius in 308 AD. After its defeat by Constantine during a battle in 312 AD, the Basilica of Maxentius was completed by Constantine. It consisted of a large central nave with enormous Corinthian columns. Three triumphal arches were built on the Forum. They were used by emperors to commemorate their victories. Hardly any remains are left of the first one, constructed by Augustus in 29 BC. This is the Arch of Titus, a 1st century AD arch located just to the southeast of the Roman Forum. It was constructed in 82 AD by the Emperor Domitian shortly after the death of his older brother Titus to commemorate Titus's victories, including the siege of Jerusalem when Jerusalem was sacked and the riches of its temple were stolen. The inscription on the west side describes the refurbishment of the monument by Pope Pius VII in 1821 AD. One panel shows the start of Titus's victory triumph procession with the participants carrying booty from the Temple of Jerusalem after the sacking of the city. The booty includes a seven-branched candelabra or menorah, silver trumpets, and perhaps even the Ark of the Covenant. The menorah depicted on the arch served as the model for the menorah used on the emblem of the State of Israel. Until the modern State of Israel was founded in 1948, Jews refused to walk under the arch due to an ancient ban placed on the monument by Rome's Jewish authorities. The ban was formally lifted in 1997. The other relief panel is carved in three-quarter view and is Titus riding a four-horse chariot and shows him being crowned by a personification of victory. The goddess Roma stands in front holding the bridle of one of the horses. The two figures to the right of the chariot are personifications of the people of Rome and the Senate. Running around the arch is a small frieze which depicts the whole triumphal procession. The interior vault contains a representation of Titus being carried to the heavens by an eagle. The arch has been a model for many triumphal arches erected since the 16th century, and most famously it's the inspiration for the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. The Temple of Romulus was built in the 4th century AD. The building is mostly intact due to its incorporation into a church. There is still a debate going on as to who the temple was dedicated to. For now it's assumed that this temple was dedicated to the son of Maxentius, Valerius Romulus, who died at the age of 4 in 307 AD. The temple of Antinus and Faustina was built in 141 AD by Emperor Antinus Pius to honor his deceased wife Faustina. After the death of the emperor 20 years later, the temple was rededicated to both Antinus and Faustina. One of the inscriptions says, to the divine Antinus and to the divine Faustina by decree of the Senate. The deep grooves in the marble columns are attributed to attempts to tear down the columns, but they didn't budge. In the seventh century, the temple was converted into a church, which was rebuilt in 1601. The Curia was the location where the Senate assembled. The rectangular brick building could seat up to 200 senators. The original Curia was built by the third king of Rome, although at another location. It burnt down four times, first in 80 BC, but it was rebuilt each time. After a fire in 53 BC, Caesar moved the Curia to the Roman Forum. The current building was constructed in 283 AD by Diocletian. In the 7th century, the Curia was turned into a church, which is a big reason why it is so well preserved. The Basilica Amelia is the oldest basilica at the Forum. Originally built in 179 BC, the purpose of the basilica was to provide shelter so that business that normally took place outside could be carried out here in case of bad weather. It was last modified in 22 AD. 
At that time, the Great Marble Hall with four aisles incorporated a number of stores that housed public banks and money exchanges. The basilica was destroyed by fire during the sack of Rome by the Visigoths in 410 AD. Only three of eight pillars remain of the Temple of Castor and Pollux. The original temple was built in 484 BC. The current ruins date from its last reconstruction in the 6th century AD. The temple was built by the Roman dictator Regulensis, who vowed to build a temple if his army would beat the Tarquin kings, who previously ruled Rome. According to the legend, Castor and Pollux, mythological twin brothers, helped the Roman army to victory and announced the victory at the Forum. In Republican times, prior to the Roman Empire, the temple served as a meeting place for the Roman Senate, and from the middle of the 2nd century BC, the front of the podium served as the speaker's platform. During the imperial period, the temple housed the office for weights and measures, and was a depository for the state treasury. The circular temple of Vesta dates back to the 4th century BC. The small temple is one of Rome's most important, as it was dedicated to the protectress of both the family and state. Here the Vestal Virgins guarded the sacred eternal flame, symbol of the eternal life of Rome. The virgins guarding the flame were chosen by the supreme religious authority of the state. The girls, who had to be aristocrats, had to serve for 30 years. In 54 BC, Julius Caesar started construction of the Basilica Julia. The Basilica housed the civil law courts and shops and provided space for government offices and banking. In the first century, it also was used for sessions of the Centum Viri, Court of the Hundred, who presided over matters of inheritance. There were also several other courts where magistrates held tribunals. The large building was destroyed by fire in 9 BC, but rebuilt again seven years later. After the fall of Rome, the Basilica was sacked. Not much remains of it today, but you can still see clearly the floor plan. The Column of Phocas is a 44-foot-tall column and is the youngest column of the Forum. It wasn't part of any temple, but it is a monument built in honor of the Byzantine Emperor Phocas on the occasion of his visit to Rome. The Corinthian Column was erected in 608 AD and was crowned with the gilded statue of Phocas. Phocas had murdered his predecessor, but he was later murdered himself. So in back of me on the right is a little marble monument, and in that area it's called the Rastra. And in 44 BC, Marcus Antonius gave a famous speech at Julius Caesar's funeral, and he said famously, Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your euros, or something like that. Near the Capitoline, or Capitoline Hill, stands the Arch of Septimius Severus. It was built in 203 AD to commemorate the victory over the Parthians, who lived in what is today Iran and Iraq. The first temple of Saturn was built during the last years of the Etruscan Kingdom. It was inaugurated at the beginning of the Republic in 497 BC. The current ruins date from 42 BC. The temple was used as the state treasury. It also housed the banners of the legions and the senatorial decrees. In 20 BC, a tall column was placed in front of the temple by Emperor Augustus, and all distances to Rome were measured from this column. This is Palatine Hill, which we will be visiting shortly. In the distance on Velian Hill is the Temple of Venus in Rome, which is ancient Rome's largest religious structure. It was designed by Emperor Hadrian in 135 AD and was dedicated to Roma, the personification of the city, and Venus, the divine ancestress of Romulus and Remus, founders of Rome. The Arch of Constantine, which is located next to the Colosseum, is the most recent of the three remaining imperial triumphal arches in Rome. After years of civil war, the victory of Constantine's army over the numerically superior army of Maxentius at the Battle of Milvian Bridge in 312 AD finally brought some peace to the Roman Empire. To commemorate this memorable victory, the Senate of Rome awarded Constantine a triumphal arch. It was dedicated just a few years later in 315 AD. Constantine believed that his improbable victory over Maxentius was the result of the help of the Christian God. As a result, during Constantine's reign, persecution of Christians ended and Christianity became the official religion in the Roman Empire. He also moved the capital of the empire from Rome to Constantinople, now known as Istanbul, in 325 AD. Here are just a few of the many ruins on Palatine Hill. At the southern end, near Circus Maximus, are the remains of the palace of Septimius Severus, Roman emperor between 193 and 211 AD, and just north of the palace of Septimius Severus is the stadium of Domitian's palace. However, it is not clear if this area was actually a public or private stadium, or that it was used as a private imperial garden. 
The stadium was completed in 92 AD. All of the brickwork used to be covered with marble. Here we see the baths of Septimius Severus, which had three levels, one at ground level, one for seating, and one for the scenic view. The walls are part of the foundation for the baths. The House of Augustus dates back to the first century BC and was the home of Rome's first emperor, Augustus, and his wife Livia. Cassina Farnese is a two-story building built in the 16th century by the Farnese family. Cassina Farnese is one of the few Renaissance buildings and the only residential one that remain atop the Palatine Hill in Rome. This is the area containing the Domus Flavia. It was completed in 92 AD by Emperor Domitian. The term Domus Flavia is a modern designation used to describe the northwestern section of the palace where the bulk of the large public rooms for entertaining and ceremony are concentrated. This is the center of the complex with a peristyle containing an octagonal island which featured a garden, a pool, and fountains. Well, that ends the tour of the Roman Forum and Palatine Hill. I hope you enjoyed this glimpse into ancient Roman history.